by Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Wednesday, July 15th. News from Arkansas. Not big news today, but lots of little pieces of news that are of interest. First of all, I'd, I'd direct you to the Arkansas blog or, or Channel 7 or Channel 4 TV stations in Little Rock that have been doing groundbreaking work on allegations of use of corporal punishment at the Anderson Taekwondo Day Center, a state licensed daycare that uh, takes state finance vouchers for children to stay there uh, under the age, preschool age. Uh, it, it's become apparent that many parents have alleged that corporal punishment has been used there, and you need to understand that corporal punishment is against the law at daycare centers. But it's gone beyond corporal punishment to brutality, they say, and they've had some pretty shocking photographs of the injuries that have resulted from this corporate punishment. The, the story has grown because now there are allegations that DHS employees, that is the Department of Human Services, which regulates daycare centers, have provided volunteer employees at this center, and they've not only engaged, observed some of this abuse, they've engaged in it themselves, and they're supposed to be mandatory reporters on the state child abuse statute. This could go back as far as 2006, nine years ago. DHS says it's investigating. There's a lot to be known. I'm afraid there's a culture in Arkansas that approves of corporal punishment and, and doesn't get excited when they find others do it, they turn a blind eye. It happens to be against the law. I hope and I'm hoping that something will arise from the attention to this case. Tom Cotton, a U.S. Senator from Arkansas, just doesn't play well with others. You know, he stood up against disaster aid to other states. He's been something of a lone wolf and seeking robust military action abroad in any number of cases. Yesterday, the issue was somewhat smaller, but, but, but telling about his uh, lack of collegiality. They were seeking a vote for unanimous consent to confirm judges to five openings on the U.S. Court of Claims. Cotton alone voted against it. He wouldn't vote for a single one of these people, even though they were all immensely qualified. There have been five openings that have been approved for filling by the Republican-controlled Judiciary Committee twice in the last two years. Cotton won't let it go forward. He says they have enough judges. The judges, the Bar Association, and others say they don't have enough judges. In Republican years, these seats were filled without contention, but that was before Tom Cotton was in the Senate. Tom Cotton is going to be an obstructionist. Uh, will it carry him to higher office? He seems to think it will. Bentonville is having a big fight over whether they should have an equal employment opportunity policy in its school district, that is, that they don't discriminate against gay people. There's a related development this week. The school board's attorney has issued a somewhat pusillanimous decision in which he says, you know, maybe this U.S. Supreme Court ruling that says all married couples should be treated equally, even same-sex couples, could mean that where the Bentonville School District provides health insurance for spouses, that includes same-sex spouses too. Well, no kidding. Thank you, learned hand. I think that's undoubtedly true. But this ties in with the issue of, of the same-sex uh, non-discrimination policy. If people apply for health insurance, they will have to out themselves effectively as being same-sex partners in a district where there's no protection for uh, people of different sexual orientation. It might cause them to be concerned. They can fix this easily. They can cover all married couples, and they cannot discriminate. How easy would that be? There's a big fight brewing on fees in the same-sex marriage lawsuit, which was won by the plaintiffs. The state says they don't didn't, shouldn't receive any money. They didn't do enough work, certainly, for the fees. They've sought some $350,000 between two lawyers, firms. The lawyers themselves are in some disagreement, have not filed uh, a joint petition for fees. One lawyer thinks the other lawyer on the plaintiff's side has asked for too much money. I think that's going to grow in controversy as the weeks pass. The Attorney General's office says it won't represent State Treasurer Dennis Milligan and his Chief of Staff Jim Harris in a defamation suit. I've tried to find out what they say their conflicts of interest are. Haven't been able to get the specifics, so the statute seems to require the Attorney General to reveal more than she's revealed so far. Whatever else is going to happen, there's a lot more entertainment. Bad news for taxpayers, I should add, coming from the reign of Dennis Milligan as state treasurer. The governor today announced that Joe Morgan, a former car dealer in Stuttgart, will join the State Game and Fish Commission. His son, Brett, had been a member previously. The Little Rock police have charged two people with murder and the death of a security guard in his home on Jackson Street. They live nearby. Other people are still being studied. Last night, voters in Little Rock overwhelmingly improved an extension of the property tax for the Central Arkansas Library System. I was happy to note that at the precinct where I vote, the vote was 53 to 1. I don't know who that sorehead was, the guy that's always yelling at kids to get off his lawn, I suppose. Uh, else. Elsewhere, uh, the city board of directors last night did pass an outright ban on solicitation of money on city streets. And finally, what is a day without Jason Rayford? I've learned and I'm developing a story 
that Rayford is on a witch hunt. He's forcing all Republican senators to disgorge their email in hopes to find the source of a leak to me of letters he wrote complaining bitterly about Governor Hutchinson not demagoguing enough the U.S. Supreme Court decision on same-sex marriage. I understand that the senator also met with the governor today, complained bitterly some more, and perhaps was lectured to a little bit by the governor. I think the governor has dealt with tougher people than Jason Rapert, including the covenant sword of the, and the arm of the Lord. I think he can handle Jason Rapert. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.